Let's start with the description of a generic radar signal processing flow. First we have some radar reflection from the environment. We need to convert that to digital and then down convert with digital I and Q samples. We may want to do beam forming if we have multiple antennas. Next we're going to want to improve range resolution using pulse compression. And then we're going to want to sort out the targets of interest from the ones that we're not interested in. What that typically means is exploit the Doppler frequency that a moving target has to separate it from the targets that are not moving. And then finally we're going to want to, of the moving targets, which ones are of more interest than others. For instance, is that um, we're more interested in a plane than a bird. And, uh, and then we may want to do some post-processing with tracking and target recognition. Many of these functions are quite suitable for being built in System Generator. In this module, we're going to just focus on the two middle blocks, pulse compression and Doppler processing. OK, so a radar antenna sends out a pulse, and then it gets reflected energy back. And in this case, we're showing a reflection from an airplane, which is bigger and moving faster, and also reflections from, from birds. Note that an antenna that has a um, that is directional, like this parabolic antenna shown here, has directional gain over an isotropic antenna or an omnidirectional antenna. The environment is is captured, or the, the power of the reflected return is captured, with what's known as the radar range equation. It looks a little scary, but, scary, but let's break it down. What we're interested in is the reflected power from a pulse that was broadcasted. That reflected power is going to be a function of the power that was transmitted, the antenna gain because it's directional, the radar cross-section of the target, so you can imagine that a bird is going to have a different cross-section than an airplane, and then of course the range to that target, and note that the range to the target is, uh, or the power of, of the target is inversely proportional to how far the target is from the radar antenna. Okay, pulse compression. Pulse compression tries to solve the problem of, of getting more resolution in the far field. So, one way to get more resolution is to, sh is to broadcast shorter pulses so that they don't overlap. And here we see two pulses coming from two different targets. But they are, of they are of rather short duration, so they don't have a lot of energy. And by the time they get back to the antenna, they just may be too short and too, uh, have too little energy to actually even register in the antenna. So one solution is to make the improve the or increase the energy of of the pulses by having them on longer. So here we have longer pulses, but note that they're overlapped. So when they get back to the radar antenna, they're seen as just as just one pulse or one target. So another obvious solution is to why don't you just use a shorter pulse but uh, have a bigger antenna? In other words. Um, a bigger amplitude on the pulse. Well, the size of the antenna varies as a function of the square of um, the uh, pulse energy. So if I want twice as much pulse energy, I'm going to need to build an antenna that's four times bigger. So the solution is pulse compression. And pulse compression is a technique that exploits uh, the correlation function of, of digital signal processing. What we need to do is to color the waveforms, if you will, in such a way that make them unique. And the popular way to do that, because it's so easy to do, is to modulate the carrier so that you uh, broadcast a linear frequency modulated waveform, as you see here. In this way, these waveforms are, uh, are uh, the pulse duration is long, but because they are um, modulated, and by the way, linear frequency modulated is known as a chirp. So let's call these waveforms chirps. When they get back to the antenna, they may be overlapped, but because they have that uniqueness quality,